is my presentation for the week eight Picasso um, videos we had to watch. And I really enjoyed this week because I really um, think it was cool to learn about Picasso and his artwork. So to begin, I wanted to do a little bit of research on who Pablo Picasso was. And so here's a picture of him above, but um, he was born in 1881. He died in 1973 and he was a Spanish painter, sculptor, printmaker, ceramicist and stage designer. And he was known as one of the most influential artists of the 20th century. Um, he also has created thousands of pieces of artwork across a lot of different mediums and I was able to learn a lot about him through these videos which was really intriguing. So in the first video we learned about Picasso's portrait of Gertrude Stein but before I go into that I wanted to introduce Gertrude herself so this is a picture of her that I found and I just kind of wanted to give background onto what she looked like because that plays a very significant role in the art that Pablo Picasso made of Gertrude Stein. So Gertrude Stein was a collector, poet, and writer, and she had almost 90 sittings with Picasso. Um, and so this, that is a little bit of an introduction onto who she is before we look at the painting. So here's the art itself. And I came to find that it was really interesting that this didn't seem to look exactly like her. And that was a really significant part of the art itself. And it was also purposeful. And so Picasso said that everyone thinks she is not at all like her portrait, but never mind in the end, she will manage to look just like it. And I thought this was really interesting because I think it could have been interpreted in a lot of different ways, whether one thinks um, one thing or the other. And I kind of took it upon myself. I mean, I looked into this a little bit and I think that it also could mean that um, the person who the portrait is of it, that person will be remembered by that portrait especially if it is a very well-known piece of art for example a piece of art like the Mona Lisa we associate that with that woman so people may not know they may not know who Mona Lisa was um, and that she was in fact a an Italian noblewoman who was born in Florence in 1479, and she was the wife of Florentine merchant Francesco del Giocondo. Um, and it was believed that Leonardo da Vinci painted her portrait between 1503 and 1506. And so um, da Vinci was the artist. And so people associate um, Mona Lisa with her paint, her portrait, and not who she actually was. I'm sure most people don't really know anything about her or about what she actually looked like. So I thought that was really interesting because this portrait of Gertrude, um, people may just associate the portrait with her. And that's why um, Picasso said that, never mind in the end, she will manage to look just like it because people will associate that portrait with her. And that was just kind of my take on it because I, I find art very interesting and I do love art. So I was able to look further into that. And I came to find that Gertrude was, in fact, content with the painting. It did not anger her or anything like that. Um, she said that it was the only um, reproduction of her, and it was really interesting to hear that. Um, and as well as understanding and learning that there was a lot of influence in this art during this time. And I think all throughout history, there's always an influence in modern art from a specific time period. So the next video we watched was called Picasso, Les Demioselles de Vigion. I'm not really quite sure how to say it, um, but all of Picasso's art is really beautiful and it's really interesting. And I found the more abstract art to be really cool because I think that a portrait is a portrait. So it's a picture of a person and it can definitely tell a story. But I think that abstract art is very unique. It's every piece of abstract art is unique in itself but it tells a story um and so i learned that the subject of this um, was a brothel and the painting reflects the idea of it being a reflection of what came before so using a similar concept from picasso where his previous art had an influence on modern art and the painting was a break from what came before it because there was a lot more color to this art as you can see um, there's different hues of different colors and it's not really dull as well as it used cubism. So this was something that I learned about this week and it was very, very interesting. I've seen a lot of art that I didn't realize what it was, which was cubism. Um, so I thought that that was very interesting to learn about and you can see um, how that comes into play later and I will explain exactly what that is. 
So first, I wanted to go um, into a little bit about what cubism actually is. And I did again, I did not know this at all. So this was really cool to learn. Um, but it is described as um, an art movement that originated in the early 20th century. So the same time that Pablo Picasso um, was very significant. And it's characterized by the representation of subjects from multiple viewpoints. And it's usually fragmented and abstracted, um, which results in a very geometric um, kind of look. So a lot of different shapes that can create a picture, which was a, what I was kind of getting into earlier, um, that art, especially abstract art, it tells a story. So I think that it's really interesting for cubism. They use these geometric shapes and this abstract type of art to be able to tell a story through a lot of different viewpoints. It's not You're not just looking at one thing you're looking at everything as a whole and there's a lot to look at it's it's a really cool and a lot of these pieces have a lot of color but these were just some i found on the internet to kind of give you a little bit of an understanding um, of what cubism is and different artists that use it um, but pablo picasso was played a very significant role in cubism um, which is what i wanted to get into a little bit as well so i found that he played a very important role in cubism and he actually was co-founding with the cubist movement that emerged in the early 20th century and so he was originally experimenting with different forms and perspectives um particularly in the works of les demio selves which i will show you in the next slide um, but that was what the video that we had watched was on i just wanted to give a little bit more of an understanding of what cubism was because i think that that is a really important base to understanding pablo picasso's art um, but these are just some examples of that. So here is um, the painting itself. I found a few different images. Um, and so I just wanted to show you guys what this looked like and what I found in the video. But this was an example of Pablo, one of Pablo Picasso's pieces of art that involved cubism and geometric shapes to kind of create an abstract story within his artwork. And so in the last video called P Pablo Picasso and the New Language of Cubism, it kind of talked about his role in cubism as well. Um, and so I found that analytic cubism is analyzing parts of an abstract painting. And so the distance from the painting changes where if you're closer, it might be harder to see kind of what the whole picture is. And so if you if you look at it from afar, it's easier to tell what the picture is trying to display as a whole. If you're looking closely, you kind of, you're probably just going to see shapes and colors, and it might be hard to visualize the whole thing. Um, so I think that that's really cool because I think that people usually think the closer you get, the more that you can see. But with this kind of art, the farther away you are, the more you're able to see the full picture, which is a really cool twist on perspectives in art. Um, and so Picasso through cubism was a representation of the current time because he used it to represent how you can use abstract art to see things from a different perspective, um, which was really cool. So I learned about a lot through these videos, but these are just a few things that I really wanted to expand upon. And the last point that I kind of wanted to make was um, how significant the title of these paintings can be because it's important to understand and have a background idea of what the painting is, because otherwise it might be hard to understand what you're supposed to be seeing and what you're supposed to be looking at. And art can be interpreted in many different ways. And I think oftentimes that's the point of the artwork. However, there usually is um, a way that you can kind of summarize what you're supposed to be seeing so you can interpret that in your own way, in a sense. Um, so I think it might be difficult to understand what you're seeing or looking at if you don't know, if you don't have or know a title of painting. So I think that's also something cool that I learned that the, the significance really of a title for a piece of artwork. So that is my presentation for the week. I hope you enjoyed watching and listening and I really enjoyed this week. I learned a lot and it was really cool to learn more about Pablo Picasso because I think that he's such a well-known artist, but people don't really know exactly what art he makes or why or kind of like a background understanding of it. So it was really cool and I hope you enjoyed as much as I did.